Hello everyone, today we're going to show you the Amon Quadro Prop Controller. This is a really easy to use prop controller and it's packed full of features. On this side we have a DC jack for power and then the input terminal. The input terminal has positive and negative which can also be used to power the controller, common and then input one. So this is an isolated input terminal. Here we have a stereo jack so you can connect up to powered speakers like computer speakers or a PA speaker. But if you have unpowered speakers you have left and right stereo channels here and that's connected up to a 30 watt amplifier. Down here we have special output zero, a slot for the included 4 gigabyte micro SD card, then outputs one through four. The play record button, status LED, and then buttons one through four, which are used for programming the channels. Button one also is used to lower the volume, button two increases the volume, and button four is for recording the ambient scene. So here we have a basic setup for the Amon Quadro. On all the outputs, we just have 12 volt LEDs hooked up, and we're powering the controller with 12 volts. These outputs, they're solid state outputs, so you just have positive and negative of output 1, positive and negative of output 2, and so on all the way to output 4. So you can hook up anything that runs on 12 to 24 volts with these. So this can be hooked up directly to solenoids for air cylinders, air cannon solenoid, or just lights. We also have a speaker hooked up to the left channel of the amplifier output. On our input terminal, since this is isolated input, we need 5 to 24 volts between the C and the 1 pin. So we have our positive jumpered to the C, and then the button, so as if an actor is triggering it, connects the negative to the 1. So when we push this button, it has 12 volts between C and 1. To record, you just hold play record until the LED turns red. So when play record is released, it will start recording. We'll hear our sound that we have loaded onto the micro SD card, and then we can push buttons one through four to control the outputs. So if we go ahead and release. And then pl press play record again to stop recording. This blue LED means it's saving, this could take a little bit depending on how long your animation is. When you get the green LED again, it is done saving. And now if we trigger, you'll hear the sound again and see the outputs play exactly as we recorded them. The ambient scene will run continuously until the input is triggered. If you want to record the ambient scene, Hold button 4 until the LED changes colors. You can then let go, and when you're ready to start recording, press the play record button, and then you can use outputs 1 through 4, just like if you're recording the animation. So if we go to that, you'll hear the ambient sound. Play record again to finish, then blue LED indicates it is saving. And then when this is done saving, we'll see that the scene is playing over and over again until we trigger it. And then it'll go back to the ambient scene. So if you have a more complicated proper scene and you want to record each channel one at a time or if you want to erase the recording on a channel, you can do that by layering them. So if you hold play record until it turns red, right now it will default to recording all the channels. But if you push one of these buttons, the LED will flash and it will no longer record that channel. So if I press 3 and 4, I will no longer be recording outputs 3 and 4. So when I let go, you see outputs 3 and 4 are already going. And outputs 1 and 2, I can set my own values for. And then save it. Then when we go back and trigger that, 
you'll see the same recordings for output three and four, and then the one and two that we just set. To layer the outputs on the ambient scene, hold number four like you're gonna record the ambient scene. When you let go, before you hit play record to start recording, you can push the outputs to turn them off. So pushing output one, it, it will no longer be recording output one on the ambient animation. All right, we've gone ahead and disconnected our speakers for the sake of talking about output zero. Output zero is something that really makes the Amon series of prop controllers special. If we plug in an LED here, trigger it, and then we'll see its default behavior. Notice the light comes on and stays on the entire length of the animation. And that can be used if you have a prop that sits in the dark, you can use that to turn on a light without wasting a special or a precious programmable output. It has also has a couple different modes. If we unplug the Amon Quadro, plug it back in and hold play record and button two until the light turns red. Now this is gonna be in start mode. So if we go ahead and trigger, notice that the output zero is only on for a second at the beginning of the animation. If we unplug it again, do the same thing, but with play record and button three. Now it's gonna be in end mode. So it's off the entire length of the animation, and then we'll turn on at the end of the animation. So this can be used to daisy chain controllers. So if you have a second Amon Badro or Amon Duo, you can use this to control the input of that controller. Unplug again, play record and button four. Now it's in start and end mode. So if we play it, it'll be on for a second at the beginning, and then again on at the after the animation has ended. To put it back into that default mode, just hold play record and button one, and then we're back in that default mode. The Amon Quadro also has pre and post delays. So with those, you can set a specified delay to happen before your animation starts or after your animation. So you can use that to add a gap between the ambient and the recorded animation. So to record those, unplug. When you plug back in, you're gonna hold outputs two and three and play and record. When it turns red, let go. It is now recording the pre-delay. So when you reach the amount of time, you can go ahead and press play and record to save that. And then when we trigger, that delay will happen before any of our outputs start going. And then the sound goes and our recorded animation plays. For the post delay, same thing, but you're gonna hold two and four and play record. Again, different colored flashing LED, but it is now recording that post delay. Same thing, play record to save that. And then we'll trigger, it'll go through the pre-delay. Then the animation. and then the post delay. And then when all that is done, it'll go back into standby or to the ambient animation. If you want to clear the pre and post delays, when you turn on the Mon Quadro, hold buttons three and four and play record. When the LED turns red, let go. And now whenever we trigger, there will be no pre or post delay. Another feature that makes the Amon Quadro special is what we call MP3 mode. This is a mode you'll use if you want to use your Amon Quadro as a media player. 
So it can be looping different ambient sounds or music in your cue line or anything. And you can still use the trigger function animation. So to put the controller in MP3 mode, you're gonna hold play record, buttons one and buttons two when turning on. Let go. And then it'll continuously loop the different ambient files you have on your SD card. So it'll just loop through them, but then you can still use the trigger. And then it'll go back to playing the ambient files. When you get your Mon Quadro, it will come with a micro SD to full size SD card adapter, and you can use that to plug it into your computer to put on sounds. So when you get it, it'll look like this. You have a README file, which just has some basic information, a link to our website where you can get the full user manual and all the videos, and then it'll tell you about the folders in there. You can read that, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through it. There's two folders, AMB, which stands for ambient, and N1, which stands for input one. Since the Amon Quadro only has one input, there's only one folder. You can put as many files as you want, up to 1,000 in here, but they need to be named correctly. They need to be 000.mp3, and then 001.mp3, and so on, all the way up to 999.mp3. So we have these three files in the ambient, and then only one file in the input. If you have multiple files in the input, then each time it's triggered, it will play the next file. And then when it's run out of files, it'll loop back to 000.mp3. Same for the ambient. Uh, each time the ambient happens, it'll play the next one. But if you have it in MP3 mode, it'll loop through all of these. So once you have it all set up, you can go ahead and remove it from your computer, put it back in your Mon Quadro, and you're good to go.